grab a cup of coffee and start your Sunday with Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life features stories to inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Every Sunday morning at 9 on the Talk of New York, AM 970, The Apple. Visit CYACYL.com. Hi, this is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Today's guest is Lee Fortson, author of the new book, Embrace, Release, Heal. In 2006, Lee was diagnosed with cancer. After her third recurrence, she was given little hope of survival. Today, Lee has a clean bill of health. She is here to talk about what she has learned throughout this journey from a medical, emotional, and spiritual standpoint. And she's going to share stories about survivors she had met, most of whom were given little to no hope of survival. Good morning, Lee. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. It's so good to be back. Lee, last week in the show, we talked about what you experienced in your life from 2006 with three cancer diagnoses. If you could give us a brief synopsis of what you went through and bring us up to the last diagnosis, which is where we left off, and and then we'll go into what you've learned in the journey. Okay. In 2006, uh, after suffering what we all thought was a hemorrhoid for a couple of years, I was diagnosed with anal cancer. I went through the um, conventional regime of uh, chemo and radiation. A year later, it had uh, moved up the rectum, and I had rectal cancer, after which I had radical surgery, And um, but it took nine months to heal because the radiation had so compromised my skin. And about a year exactly to the date of the previous two, I was diagnosed with a um, small tumor near my sciatic nerve that they called metastasize. It was at that point that I really decided they didn't have a lot of hope for me. I decided to do a whole range of things, uh, including I became a raw foodist. I read everything I could on self-healing. Um, I did a lot of emotional work, very deep emotional work, and I did include in that menu something called CyberKnife, which is a, a more progressive radiation therapy. So I did all that stuff, and I also wrote the book largely to save myself because I needed to hear the stories of other people who had saved themselves. And it was a great, they're, they're, they're my heroes. I mean, it was a wonderful, wonderful way to work through this. So, Lee, they told you after the last diagnosis it had metastasized. They told you that you could not do radiation, that you could not, or, or traditional radiation, that you could not do chemotherapy, and the doctor told you that his fear was of what was to come. You had told us that you thrust him into a depression, but you at this point were starting to do all of this emotional cleansing. And you said that during that time, you realized that cancer has a purpose, that it had a purpose in your life, and that there was meaning to the disease. Uh Why do you believe in that? And how could an experience like this have actually been good for you? Well, first I want to clarify, they didn't say that I couldn't do chemo. They said it probably wouldn't be appropriate. And I said, fine, I won't do it anyway, Mm -hmm. because I don't like it. But I think that life is a journey. Life is an, uh, an amazing journey. And when we are up against hardship and crises. There's an opportunity to delve into the meaning behind it, which I believe that there is meaning and purpose behind everything. I really do. It's a very subjective experience to go internally deep enough to find the meaning. I just think if we don't capture those opportunities while we're in crisis, we will miss out on some of the greatest sources of our own wisdom. We won't be able to grow into our own wisdom. And I do believe that our purpose on earth is spiritual, psychological, emotional evolution. These crises, they're not there to make us go through hell. They're not there to hurt us. They're there to awaken us. And I chose, after that third diagnosis, I chose to look for everything that could help me awaken to why I was here, why I was going through this, what it could mean, and how I could... Um, transcend the cancer culture, the pain, the fear, and put together some patchwork of meaning, which I did. Do you like the person that you are now better than the person you were before the diagnosis? (laughs) You know, I always had a pretty good um, self-relationship, but oh my God. (laughs) I mean, I I am so much more self-loving. I am so much more go with the flow. You know, I, I do... I do believe, as Louise Hay, a great author, the sort of the grandmother of looking at 
disease and finding an emotional platform for it. I do believe that disease is related to emotional and energetic stuff. Anal cancer is about what? It's the portal of elimination, right? Mm-hmm. So what would I, I had to go, okay, what, what have I been holding on to? What am I not releasing? What am I constipated about? You know, I mean, it, I had to sort of go to that place, which I think is, uh, has merit. It's, it, it really can be quite insightful. And it, it, it led me to just some old grievances from childhood, from my marriage, um, judgments I had against others, but it's toward myself as well, and even toward God. And so I just think that there's a great deal of value in, um, in that. And yes, I, I got to say, I am so joyfully in love with myself. And that may sound weird and maybe even narcissistic, but it's so, it's so far away from narcissism because when you really love yourself, your cup is overflowing and you can't help but love everyone and be so appreciative it's not a self-centered love. It's a love of abundance. Yeah, I do like myself better. I do. Lee, there seems to be more of a widespread belief now that there's an emotional connection to the onset of cancer. And Colin Tipping was a guest on Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, and he is the founder of Radical Forgiveness. And he said that through his work with cancer patients, he realized that sometimes 10, 20 years prior to the onset of cancer, there was some type of a major trauma Uh that these people experienced. And in your book, you talk about a Dr. Hammer. His work is in this area. Can you tell us a little bit about what Dr. Hammer said on the emotional connection to cancer? Sure, sure. And I just, before I talk about him, I want to say that in the book, I interview 30 people, about 10 of whom were people who were told they were going to die, and 10 or so docs, both conventional and allopathic, and then 10 people who research the relationship between the mind and body. It's not just a connection. It's a it's a single organism. So everyone I interviewed, everyone said, yeah, there's an emotional connection. Everybody, even the conventional docs. I, I interviewed one, uh, one oncologist, and he was one of the most eloquent about how, how that relationship uh, plays out. But Dr. Hammer is a, um, he's an amazing guy. He's a German guy, and what happened is his son was murdered when he, I think he was 19, and shortly thereafter, Dr. Hammer got testicular cancer, and he had been working with cancer patients, and he suddenly thought, why do I have this? What happened? What what happened? And I think it happened maybe, I, I can't remember exactly how long after his son's murder it, it surfaced, but I think within 10 years. And so he decided to start looking at the emotional relationship between what happens to us and, and cancer. And he started taking pictures of the brain. It's been a while since I wrote about him, but I believe that he was able to find places in the brain, that he took scans of the brain, where there's this sort of emotional blip that is related to what people go through emotionally. And he has a a technique for retrieving that, healing that, working with you physically, psychologically, and he's had wonderful success in helping people heal from their cancer experience. And his whole premise is that it's a physiological wound in the brain itself. And one of the things I like about the book is that there are so many different doctors who have different ideas for what causes cancer, but that's a really unique take on it, and it's pretty profound, so people can learn about that. It seems that the common thread among all of these experts is that it's not strictly genetic, that there is so much more to it. I like the way Dr. Hyman explains it when he talks about the weeds in the garden. We cut down the weeds, but we don't treat the soil, and that's what we do. We take care of the disease, but we don't treat the garden, where the cancer stems from. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, a, it's such a different mindset to, to go to a doctor who's got a holistic understanding. I was just in New York, and I went to uh, a doctor there because I'm having some physical issues that we believe are related to the radiation I had. Um, we don't know for sure what it is. We're in the process of figuring it out. But I work with these holistic people, and they talk to me about which foods to eat. They talk to me about you know, the emotional stuff that might be behind it. Um, You know, I'm working with transpersonal psychologists on how to sort of dig in deeply into my mind to figure out if there's an emotional relationship that can help me heal it. But this doctor I went to in New York was, you know, he was a traditional doc, very well respected, but his, he, he looked at my body like it was a machine and basically told me that it would get worse and it was probably cancer and, you know, on and on and on. And I just, I just, I suddenly was like 
It was like being slapped in the face, being taken back to that culture where assumptions are made without enough evidence because there's not enough diagnostic evidence, even though the biopsies we've done have all been clean. His, his assumption, because he's in the cancer world, is that it's probably cancer. And, and, and you just go, whoa. And I walked out of there wanting to throw up and cry, and I did cry. And I just went, that's what we're up against. Now, when you go to somebody who treats your body like a holistic organism, including your thoughts, your subconscious thoughts, your diet, your lifestyle, what kind of genetics you have, what kind of environmental toxins there are. There's a, you know, cancer is not a single issue, I don't think. I think it's a multidimensional, complex issue. It could be from one thing or another or another or another, but there's a whole new science called epigenetics, which Dr. Bruce Lipton came up with. He wrote a book that changed my life called The Biology of Belief, and it talks about his scientific evidence that he's been able to surface. He doesn't believe that things are genetically predisposed. That's why it's called epigenetics. It's above the genetic realm. He says there's only three things that affect cells, toxins, trauma, and thoughts. And he's widely acclaimed. His research has proven itself. And it's very, very exciting because it kind of takes us all into that quantum world where all kinds of things can affect us from subconscious thoughts to conscious thoughts to memories, you know, in addition, of course, to our lifestyles and eating habits. So it's a big arena. And if you want, you can really get yourself excitedly involved in your process of healing because it is multidimensional. And if you are up for the challenge, you can, you can do an amazing, uh, you can have an amazing journey of self-discovery and really unfold self-love. Well, and that's the thing. And, and if our listeners don't walk away with anything other than this, I would like them to walk away with the fact that, yes, conventional medicine is wonderful. It saves lives. But mm-hmm. they need to remember that they have to take responsibility for their own healing and that there is so much more for them to look into. Let's take a break for this week's Healthy Living Tip. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Mojda Hagverdi, board certified in anti-aging functional and internal medicine. Do you diet and exercise and no matter how hard you try, you can't seem to lose weight? Do you wonder what you're doing wrong? There are many complex factors that can contribute to weight gain. Weight gain results from relationships between the body system and the environment. When the body is not working properly or when any of these systems are not in balance, the result can be weight gain. Some of the major factors that can contribute to weight gain include hormonal imbalance. In order for you to enjoy a good health and ideal weight, your hormones need to be balanced and at optimal level. For example, under stress, if your cortisol is high, it will compete with your progesterone and pushes your thyroid hormone to be more bound and therefore less effective, which can lead to weight gain. Thyroid hormone dysfunction. If your level of production is too low, you gain weight. The thyroid gland is the body's regulator. Many patients are routinely told that their thyroid levels are fine, but they actually have severely low functioning thyroids that are not being picked up by the standard TSH and T4 testing. Insulin resistance. If insulin is present but not working as well as it could, insulin levels elevate to compensate for its ineffectiveness. Insulin increases your ratio of fat to muscle. An increase in insulin decreases fat burning. Elevated insulin is a common link to obesity. Gastrointestinal imbalance. The normal gut flora has 400 microbial species. The gut has a massive amount of influence on your metabolism. The gastrointestinal tract is also involved with neuroendocrine regulations. Of the body serotonin, 5% is in the brain, 95% in the gut. Dysbiosis, which is a state of health where the bowels don't function properly, leading to leaky gut syndrome, can also be a common cause of weight gain or inability to lose weight. Chronic inflammation. Inflammation is used by the body to heal. However, when the inflammatory response is too great, it can cause disease. Decreasing inflammation can help you achieve weight loss. Weight gain and obesity are complex medical disorders that require a multifactorial approach. I provide a complete analysis and tailor a program specifically designed for your body. Contact my office for a consultation. I'm conveniently located in Ramsey, New Jersey, 201-995-1601. 
Change your attitude, change your life, and big, believe, inspire, grow. Salute the entrepreneurial spirit of small business owners, people who follow a dream, work hard, and make it happen. This week's Spotlight on Chameleon Resumes is brought to you by VMM Benefits, a voluntary benefit specialist. Call VMM at 201-697-0203. Getting a job today is harder than ever. To be successful, a candidate must stand out from the competition online, in person, and on paper. Chameleon Resumes can help job seekers triumph in all these areas. Chameleon Resumes is a full-service job search consultancy specifically created to partner with candidates who want professional guidance to navigate today's complex, high-touch technological marketplace. Chameleon Resume services include the creation of branded resumes, social media profiles, and targeted letters. Additionally, hone your story and your search with focused interview preparation, job search planning, and compensation guidance. Chameleon Resumes can successfully coach and support candidates through each aspect of the job search process. Are you ready to make the commitment to your search? Let Chameleon Resumes help you reinvent yourself to the world. Call Lisa at 917-447-1815 or visit chameleonresumes.com. Health insurance costs have risen at an alarming rate. At the same time, coverage choices have narrowed. Supplemental insurance provides an employer with the opportunity to enhance its current health plan without adding cost or administration. From accidents to catastrophic illness to intensive care to unexpected death, VMN Benefits has the plan to meet your needs. Call VMN Benefits at 201-697-0203 to learn more about supplemental insurance. VMN Benefits, providing peace of mind for your employees. Some people prefer traditional funeral services. Others prefer cremation. Some want an elaborate ceremony. Others don't want any ceremony at all. Visit Funeral Homes offer all types of services because we know there are all types of people. That's why we specialize in personalized funeral services. To meet the needs of each and every family, call Bishop Quinlan Funeral Homes of Clifton at 973-546-2000 and Bishop Parker Funeral Home of Little Falls at 973-256-4700 for ideas and information on how to plan a service as individual as you are. Hi, I'm Judy Schumacher-Tilton, owner of Gearhart Chevrolet in Denville. We have been in business since 1929 and are part of the new GM. Please stop by and see our complete line of beautiful, fuel-efficient vehicles. Our dealership has been built on reputation, providing courteous, honest service. We are family-owned and operated. Come join the family. Call Gearhart Chevrolet at 973-627-0900. That's 973-627-0900 or visit GearHeartChevy.net. Welcome back to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Our guest today is author of the new book, Embrace, Release, Heal, Lee Fortson. In 2006, Lee was diagnosed with cancer. After her third recurrence, she was given little hope of survival. Today, Lee has a clean bill of health. Lee, before break, we were talking about some of the findings during this emotional cleansing and this journey of healing. How do you think someone can find the self-love that is necessary for their healing? Well, everybody has to take their own steps toward that. Many people are uncomfortable with the, with the mere notion of self-love. Uh, they, they go, what is that? I don't know how to do that. That's narcissistic. Or, or, or they just believe they're not worth the type of self-loving that I think healing warrants. Fortunately, we live in a time where there are so many fabulous masters of higher consciousness. There are bookstores full of books that can help people break through whatever obstacles they have to self-loving. And for some people, it's through religion. For some people, it is just listening to beautiful music and really giving yourself to the, the beauty of that and realizing that you're no different than the music. I think everybody has to find the path that works for them because there's not a one-size-fits-all way to coming to love yourself. But I do think that self-forgiveness and forgiveness of others, that living in gratitude, um, those, two, those two facets of healing will do amazing things for finding out the beauty of who you really are. If you can really uh, shore up your vision so that you see through the eyes of gratitude, oh my God, is that healing. Gratitude for yourself, others, any situation that comes along, walking into a room and seeing what's beautiful there, and then forgiveness. And Colin Tipping is a great place to start. Radical forgiveness is awesome. In the book, you interview survivors, people that were basically told to go home and get their affairs in order. And when I read 
the stories, the way their bodies were ravaged with cancer. I am amazed that these people are still alive years later. What do you think is a common quality that each person has to survive? Or is there one? There is one common thread between all of them. They decided not to die. Then they all found their own way not to die. It may have been Qigong and Tibetan medicine. It may have been forgiveness work and raw foods. It may have been creative visualization. There's a different story for everyone in the book, which is part of why I, I am just so in awe of these people. The one common thread, not all of them changed their diet, not all of them believe in God, not all of them did creative visualization, but what they did is they found what worked for them, which points back to taking responsibility in your own unique way for who you are and how you can best heal. Yeah, the stories are, are stunning. And the other thing is they had to believe they could heal and that that is the number one obstacle for all of us. And in fact, I was at a, a luncheon with a bunch of really smart women um, a few months back and I started telling the stories of some of these folks. And this one woman just looked at me and she said, I don't believe it. I do not believe it. And Indeed, some of these stories are unbelievable, but they happened. They're true, whether you believe them or not. And again, our mindset, what we believe is possible, is going to determine the outcome. The Well, not necessarily the outcome, because we don't have total control over that, but it will determine the experience and the quality of our life and the opportunity for what we call miracles to occur. We have to believe in them. And that's the most important thing I would say is to never let anyone take your hope away. Ah, oh, and you know, that, the conventional doctors that I interviewed, and I'm so glad I included them because I thought it was only going to be alternatives, but uh, every doctor I spoke to said, if you are told there's no hope, get out of that office as soon as you can and find a doctor who will say, oh, we can, we can work with this. I don't know what's going to happen, but we can work with it. If you work with somebody who doesn't believe that you can make it, that ain't going to give you much hope in yourself. You got. You have to just. You have to go with people who can say, "Let's let's go on this journey. We'll find a way. We're going to do everything we can. It's it's the only way to go." Lee, very quickly before we run out of time, steps for someone who's newly diagnosed with cancer. What's the first thing that someone should do? Take a day out or two, no matter how bad they say it is, and find yourself. Find your center. Find your authority. Know that there are options. You don't have to go the conventional way, but if you choose to, believe in it 100%. If you decide the conventional way isn't, it isn't for you, do your research. There's plenty of information in my book. There's lots of information on the web. You have to be true to yourself, and no matter what treatment you do, believe in it and love yourself through it and get all the support you can from people who love you, not the people who are looking at you going, oh, you're going to die. Surround yourself with love. Love is the governing force of the universe, and it is the most healing agent we have access to. But take yourself, take your soul on this journey. You've got to be the authority of your experience. Lee, how important is a second opinion? It depends on if you think you need one. You know, if you trust your doctor, if your doctor is somebody that you, in your gut, knows, you know that this person has your best interest in heart and you don't feel the need for a second opinion, no worries. If you have something that's eating at you, go for it. And if the second opinion eats at you, go for another. Each person's journey is unique. You have to answer to what's true for you. Lee, we've been talking about alternative treatments. How can someone ensure that a treatment doctor or facility is reputable? There's no insurance. There's no insurance. And there's no guarantee that if you go for either conventional or alternative treatments that it'll work. Nobody can give you that. Nobody. You have to do what's due diligence. You have to do research. Ask for names of people that these folks have treated. You know, do every, thank God we have the internet because, you know, there are, there are lots, of, lots and lots of ways to find out if somebody's legit. Now, that said, if somebody is legit but is not successful with their treatment, there may be people out there who say that they're not legit. But how many people die from cancer who have undergone conventional treatment? You have to kind of keep all this in perspective do your research, get as many names of um, patients who've worked with that doctor as you can. But there's also a lot, of, a lot of cancer centers that are very reputable around the country are now including integrative medicine in their protocol. If you're a little concerned, you know, that's probably the best way to go because you can go to places like um, 
uh, well, for instance, there's a place in, in Goshen, Indiana, um, and it's, a, a, it's, the integra it's, it's an integrative cancer center, and they work with conventional and alternative docs to make sure that your, your experience is as least um, brutal as possible. The author is Lee Fortson, and the book, Embrace, Release, Heal, Lee, I'm so happy that you were here today. If our listeners would like more information, please visit the website, EmbraceHealingCancer.com. Or as always, you can visit our website, CYACYL.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our website, read our digital magazine, listen to past shows as podcasts, and sign up for our mailing list. The book, Embrace, Release, Heal, I highly recommend that everyone get a copy. It is a compilation of inspiring stories. It offers hope. I thank you so much for writing it. And I am so happy that you were here to write this book and to share this information with our listeners. And I wish you much health and happiness and success in the future, Lee. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to be on the show, and I wish everyone the best of luck. This is Joan Herman, and Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Thanks for tuning in.